In this demo, we will look at tenancy restrictions. How can we differentiate between Pepsi's version of Office 365 versus Coke's version of Office 365? In this demo, we're gonna set up tenants or tenancy restriction in what we call as tenant profiles. In a tenant profile, you can define the instance of the application. In this example, we're looking at Microsoft. You can define the tenant directory as well as the tenant domain. You can add multiple tenant domains. And when you add these domains, traffic is only allowed to the specified tenant domains. Tenancy restriction can be supported for other cloud applications. And for each of these cloud applications, you can add the domains and say which domains you allow traffic to and implicitly block to other domains. In this particular example, to get the tenant directory, we can log into Office 365 go to the admin center, look at Azure, and then from Azure, you can go figure out what your tenant directory is. And this tenant directory is primarily informational. This helps both Microsoft as well as Zscaler tell you from which tenant or from which company is your traffic being originated. That is the same tenant directory you will enter in the tenant profile. The tenant domains could be multiple and you can use these tenant profiles in a very granular method. So how you set this up is you would go to Cloud App Control Policy. You would select Microsoft Login Services and within Microsoft Login Services, you would set up a policy. So in this example, We've set up a policy for Microsoft login services, selected the tenant profile data parity that we configured, and then we will give the action as allow and then save it. What it does here is that it allows traffic only to the data parity instance of Microsoft and to all other instances of Microsoft, traffic will automatically be blocked. So let's go take a look and log in to an instance of Office 365. In this example, I'm logging into my corporate instance of Zscaler. And we do know that we should only be allowed to access to data parities instance of Office 365. If you log in to any other instance, even though we've allowed that traffic, it should be blocked. So as you see here, the domain is cop.zscaler.com. I click next, and then now it will ask me to log in. And then it says, hey, you can't get here from there. This traffic is actually blocked by Microsoft. This is because we insert a header and the header says only traffic to data parity should be allowed and all other traffic will be blocked. Now we log in to data parity. So Kevin at dataparity.net, we log in and now traffic should be allowed to this instance of Office 365. And what happens here is that we insert a header called data parity and it also matches the tenant's instance of data parity. Um, I have two-factor auth set in. Uh, so again, I'm gonna enter my two-factor auth code. And then once I enter my code, um, I will be able to log in to Office 365. And this gives you the enterprise control on what instances of Office 365 you would like your users to log into and what instances of Office 365 they cannot access. As you can see here, I'm able to log into Office 365 and I can access any of the applications inside of Office 365. Hence, we can control which instance of Office 365 your enterprise will allow and which instances you can block. This can be done for multiple applications and we can support greater than hundreds of instances of Office 365.